Hi, my name is Uri Wallach and I lead the development of CPM at N2W Software. CPM, or Cloud Protection Manager, is a backup and recovery solution for servers running on the EC2 Compute Cloud of Amazon Web Services. In other video tutorials, we saw how to configure a new EC2 instance running CPM server, and we saw how to define backup policies and schedules and how to perform recovery. In this tutorial, we will see how to backup and recover a Windows server with Microsoft VSS. Now there are a few differences when uh, when performing backup and recovery for Windows Server. First of all, if I want to use VSS, I will need to install an agent on the Windows Server, what we call a CPM Thin Backup Agent or a Windows Agent. This agent is a takes only a few seconds to install and configure, and it uh, it runs as the Windows service on the server and does not interfere with anything. And Almost all configuration is done from the CPM server, so you don't need to handle it at all. So it's not it's not a big thing. Uh, the way it, it uses VSS is it creates local shadow copies uh, on the volumes just before backup begins, and right after the EBS snapshots are taken, it releases or deletes those shadow copies. Now this means that the shadow copies live for only split seconds or a few seconds, which means they will not take almost any resources. However, the snap the shadow copies will be on the snapshots of the volume. So when we perform recovery, we will be able to revert to those shadow copies to get to the most consistent state we can and to utilize VSS. Now, uh, another thing we need to know about uh, recovering Windows servers is that Windows servers uh, cannot be recovered from a snapshot of a system volume. AWS currently does not support creating a launchable AMI image from a snapshot of a system volume in Windows. This means that uh, we, we need to keep an updated AMI of the server and keep it handy so we can use it when we perform recovery. The way to, to get a, an AMI is to click here and to click on create image. We can do it of course also through other tools and through the API. But that uh, actually takes time and it also boots or reboots the instance and it's not, not, not something we can do every backup. So the, the best practice here is to create once in a while a new image. Uh, the best thing is to do it when we perform updates on the server, when we stop it anyway for maintenance or something like that. And then to keep, uh, to keep the AMI ID handy so we know when we need to recover exactly which AMI to take. Another option would be to, to stay with the original AMI we created the original server from, but, but that can be out of date, so, so it's best to keep an updated image. Anyway, let's start by, uh, by defining a policy. Just uh, to show you quickly the server, it's a, it's a Windows 2008 R2 data center server with SQL 2008 R2 installed on it. It's a large instance. As you can see here, this is the remote desktop of the server. Uh, we have... Uh, all kinds of demo databases installed here on the uh, SQL server just for the demo purposes. And uh, now let's let's start by defining a policy, okay? So I'm gonna click on policies, click on new policy. I'm gonna name the policy SQL server, give it a short description. I'll leave everything else as default and will not uh, choose a schedule at this stage. Clicking on apply. Now I need to add the SQL Server instance as a backup target, or in this case, as the only backup target of this policy. So I'm clicking on backup targets, add instances, and I'm choosing from the list SQL Server, clicking on add selected and close. And now we can see SQL Server as the backup target, and we believe everything else as default. Actually, I could drop the, the need to perform a snapshot or perform backup on the system volume, but I will leave it as it is now because it's simpler and also I may want to keep a copy of the system volume anyway in case I need to pull files of it or for reference or whatever. So let's leave it as is. I'm clicking on backup uh, policies back. So now I need to define uh, that this policy actually uses VSS and has an agent as we, as we talked about before. Uh, assigned to it. So I'm going to click on more options. And you can see the first field here is Windows Agent. You get a list here which in this case we have only one 
potential candidate to be the agent, which is the actual SQL server instance. So we'll choose it and choose set now, approve. And now I can define a backup agent key, which is the way the backup agent will authenticate against the CPM server. So I'm click again and approve. And this is the key, I'll, I'll use it later. And uh, now we can see we have also enable VSS and agent, which is enabled by default, so we don't need to change anything. And here we can choose a subset of the volumes of the Windows Server to perform shadow copies on. Uh, I can type in the drive letters here, but I leave it empty. Empty means that it will perform shadow copies for all the volumes. Let's leave it as is and click on apply.